My name is Michelle Backus, environmental agent with Rutgers Cooperative Extension, and today you're going to be learning about floating wetland islands, a technology that helps reduce nutrient pollution and algae blooms in our local lakes and ponds. Floating wetland islands have many important benefits. My name is Fred Lubno, and I'm with Princeton Hydro. I'm the director of the aquatics program, and today we're actually installing floating wetland islands. Uh, which is a fairly new technology. It uses recycled plastic material that we then plant a variety of native vegetation on top. The plants and the associated microbes uh, remove nutrients from the water column, so it's basically taking nutrients that would otherwise go into nuisance algae and plants and putting it into plants that are good, plants that are attractive. One pound of phosphorus has the potential to generate up to 1,100 pounds of wet algae goo that you see in a lake or pond. So each of those islands will be removing approximately 11,000 pounds of algae per year. There are many sources of phosphorus in a waterway, including eroded soil sediments, lawn and garden fertilizer, and animal waste. In addition to nutrient removal, the floating wetland islands provide habitat for fish and other aquatic organisms. Now let's take a closer look at the different parts of the floating wetland islands and how to put it together. The islands are actually made of recycled plastic material. It's frayed, so it has a huge amount of nooks and crannies. That allows for a lot of microbes to thrive and grow inside. Those microbes help to assimilate the nutrients from the water column. These beneficial microbes live naturally in the water column, but they need a surface to attach to in order to flourish. The plant roots and the spaces in the floating wetland are the perfect place for these microbes to accumulate and thrive. This island here is composed of three main parts, which we've stitched together. In its entirety is 250 50 square feet in area. You can see that it's lined with these holes. We'll put a little bit of a material called biomix, which is a mix of soil and peat moss into the hole. Then we put in the plugs of the native vegetation, put a little more of the mix on top, water it, and then we'll deploy it into the lake. And then over time, the roots go in through the recycled plastic material, then the combination of the microbes and the plants will suck up those nutrients from the water column. The island should be placed near the shore, wherever polluted stormwater enters the lake. This could be by a storm drain pipe or swale. A lot of times what we've seen is if, in, if the island is in an area that gets a lot of shade, plant growth isn't as vigorous as it is when it's in sunlight for most of the day. So you may have to move the island depending on the amount of sunlight available. More things to consider are putting the islands closer to the shore to prevent wind drag and also in the no-wake zones of the lake. The plants used on a floating wetland island are native plants, which are plants that are found naturally in a particular area and are well adapted to that region. This is an example of one of the species. Uh, this is called arrowhead. Uh, there'll be some flowering plants, not a lot, but they will be like black-eyed Susans. We may install some milkweed. So a variety of species will be planted because you don't want to have it just uniform with one species and you don't want it completely random. So I'll put maybe five to ten of this species here and then I'll pull another one of the flats and put another set of species over there. Other plants that can be used are common rush, cardinal flower, blue vervain, and New England aster. All of these plants are native to New Jersey. When the plants first go well into the islands, the first day or so they look a little limp, but after the island begins to uh, suck up water, uh, the plants then uh, begin to look a lot healthier and they start to grow. The islands need to be anchored in place so they don't move from their given location. Our earlier projects we used to use simple cinder blocks, but we saw that that wasn't uh, sufficient enough. So what we do is we use some quick cement, uh, we pour that into some buckets and create an anchor with an eye hook on top and then we use a steel cable to attach each anchor to one of the corners of the floating wetlands. Maintenance of the floating wetland islands is minimal. The most important issue is to maintain the goose netting in the first year. After the first year of uh, healthy growth, the vegetation tends to be high enough that the geese will let the island alone. But it's that first year that's really critical. Otherwise, you're just it's an open invitation for the geese to come in and, and feed on the vegetation. Beyond that, you want to make sure no one's messing with the lines. What we've also seen is after about four or five years, you may want to bring the island to shore and cut the vegetation above the island just to remove some of those nutrients 
that have accumulated on the island over the years, but that certainly doesn't have to be done every year. Harvested plant material can be bagged up and disposed of with the regular garbage or composted. Floating wetland islands are an inexpensive, chemical-free technology for reducing nutrient pollution and algae in a local lake or pond. This is one of the many methods that are available for you to improve the health of your watershed.